Hello everybody, this is going to be a tutorial on uh, the Atelier Bow Wow section perspective style drawing right here. It uh, doesn't have to necessarily be this one, but most of their um, drawings that people are super intrigued by or at least interested in are this type of style where, they, where it's all line work, all line weights um, that are kind of light, and our section right here is what kind of dominates the visual information. So we can see there's a lot of line work going on. There's people populating the scene. There's plants, bikes, dogs, uh, beverages, um, lighting. I don't know if we're going to get all of that detail within this drawing in the small period of time that I have to make a video, but you can, you can spend tons and tons of time developing the scene uh, to however you want. So right away, uh, what we can see is in the section, instead of it being a black fill or a black poche like we see on some drawings, the section in here is actually going to be embedded with building information. So whatever building material is used to make this roof or make this wall, it is, it's going to show a little bit of that information. So right now we can see there's some insulation here, there's some wooden posts, there's a, uh, a slab down here that's insulated, there's some concrete. Uh, stem wall action going on over here, windows, doors, steel I-beams, uh, so a ton of information. We're going to try to emulate that. It might not be 100% to this level of detail, but we'll see how far we can get. So I'm going to minimize this, and let's get started. So to begin this process, I'm going to um, actually set up my file to be a little bit more conducive to um, building scale modeling. For your surfaces you might have generated, the building scale might be in inches. We're actually going to go up to File up here, go down to your Properties, and go to Units. And if it's reading as inches, change that to Feet. Um, down here, you can change how that's going to be displayed. So if you like uh, visual information uh, in a decimal point, you can do that. I, technic or I, I tend to do uh, feet and inches. So I'm going to do feet and inches. And in our model scale, it should be the same way. In our layout, I like to do uh, feet and feet and inches as well. So we're going to start there. So once we have those units set up, we can actually scale this object up to the size of a small building. Um, I'm going to think of setting the scene as like a small cafe. So I'm going to do, let's just say, a, a 24 foot by 24 foot cube. Um, so let's go in our command line and type scale. We're going to select our surface over here as the scale. I'm going to click one corner of the object, uh, another corner of the object, and then we can start to scale it. To be more precise, I'm going to type in our command line that's up here right now. I'm going to type 24 feet and press enter. So now we have increased the scale. I think it's a, a, a decent size to start working with. So now that we have that uh, going, um, we can explode this surface because right now it's a closed poly surface. We can only select the entire object. Let's type in explode in our command line. We'll select this object to explode and press enter. And now what it's telling me is up here it says it has exploded a poly surface into six surfaces. So when we click on this, we can see that there are now individual surfaces that we can start working with. Before I start working with these, I'm going to take one of our layers here, and I'm going to rename it uh, Waffle Structure. And you'll see why here in a second. I'm going to take this surface here. Actually, before I do that, um, I'm going to be working in my surface layer. I'm going to type copy in the command line, and I'm going to just out here paste another one. So just in case, if I mess this uh, surface up and I don't want to go all the way back to the beginning, I have an artifact to work with over here. 
And if we don't want it to be uh, in the way, we can always hide it. If we want to bring that back up in the future, we can type show and it'll show all of our hidden uh, elements. So for right now, let's just hide that surface. Now I'm going to go over here in our layers and click waffle structure. I'm going to bring the surface on top of our structure over here and drag it over to kind of work with away from here. Um, I'm just going to say that that's kind of a perfect size. I really don't know what um, this will end like, so let's just see. So to create a waffle grid structure, I, the reason why I want to do a waffle grid structure is they're kind of um, used in a lot of architecture practice, whether that be out of steel or wood. Um, I'm just going to say this is going to be a steel waffle grid structure. The command that we're going to use to develop this structure is called contour. So if we type contour up in our command line, press enter. It says set objects for contours. This is going to be the object that we're going to contour with. I'll press enter. Contour base point. I'm just going to select a point on here. I'm going to hold shift. And then the line that we generate right here, the contours that will be generated will be perpendicular. So if we have a line going in this direction, the contours will develop perpendicular to that line. So I'm going to set this as a direction. Uh, we'll have them assigned to our current layer, join curves. We, none of this, I'm not, I'm not gonna mess with any of this. Um, but the distance between contours is gonna be important. You can have it be two feet. You can type one foot up here and it'll do one foot increments. I think that's going to be a little too intense. So I'm going to go back to contour and I'm going to have my spacing be two feet actually. And now what you can see is there's these contours that have been generated uh, by two foot increments. Now I'm going to go back to that contour command and I'm going to select this object again and I'm going to do the opposite direction for this next next set, it's still going to be two feet in between each contour, and I'll press enter. So now we can see that we have a, a new grid similar to the intersection grid that we had generated. Um, so both ways are valid for generating um, some contours. You could have a grid already generated, extrude those contours up in surfaces and slice your object or intersect two sets. This way is just a little bit faster and you don't have uh, much of a process to go through. So now I'm going to take this surface and kind of move it out of the way so we can deal with our uh, contours right there. So now what I'm going to do is we need to give some thickness to these things. We need to make them seem like structural members. So I'm going to select all of these right now and we are going to extrude curve. So it's extrude CRV and press enter. Now we can extrude in the Z direction. I am going to say, um, let's extrude these six inches. So I'm going to extrude them six inches into the air. Uh, right now, all of our contours are still selected from that previous uh, procedure. We can actually um, move these out of the way with the gumball tool. And the gumball, again, is going to be a tool right down here. If we select it off, uh, we don't have that ease of manipulation. If we turn it on, we can move it, we can scale it, and we can rotate it. So if you want to use the gumball, it's a fantastic tool. Have that selected down there. Uh, it'll make your life a little bit easier. So now we have a thickness in the Z direction made. Now we need to make them thick in the X or Y direction to make them seem like actual pieces of timber. And how we're going to do that is I'm going to select all of these. And remember, stay within your waffle structure right now. So everything that we generate should be in this layer. That way, if we need to turn that layer off and on, they're already set in that layer. So let's have all these selected. I'm actually going to control click the exterior. 
So I don't want those to be selected right now. I just want all the interior information to be selected. And now what we are going to do is called extrude surface. So if we type extrude SRF, that's going to allow us to actually extrude our surfaces. Um, I'm going to change the direction to be this way. And now I'm also going to extrude both directions. So we can see like if we are extruding this, it's actually going to extrude it fairly thick. Oh, I also messed up. Um, so right now it's going to be extruding everything in the same direction, which is not what we want. Uh, let's go through and actually only select these elements right here. So we'll do contour by contour, uh, one direction, and then we'll do another direction. So we have those selected. Let's do extrude surface one more time. Uh, we want it to extrude both sides. So if we do one side, it'll just extrude from one edge. If we do both sides, it'll extrude from the midpoint, which is uh, kind of a nice, a nice way to do it so we still stay centered on our grid. So if we extrude both sides, let's say I want an overall end thickness to be an inch and a half thick. So I'm going to extrude both sides by 0.75 of an inch or three quarters of an inch and press enter. And now what we can see has happened is we have some thickness that, that looks like a piece of wood or a piece of steel or, or something that's not just a plane or a line. We can go back and select our planes that have not been extruded yet. And I'm, I'm not doing the edges again. I'll show you why in a second. We're going to go through extrude surface one more time. Uh, 0.75 of an inch, so we get that overall thickness of an inch and a half. And now we have our interior structure reading like actual building material. Um, there's some issues that can be generated sometimes, like now it's kind of offset by a little bit. Um, I'm not going to worry about that, especially in this uh, tutorial. If you do need to worry about that, you can always go back and brush up and fix your model. But for right now, I think that's going to work for us. Now let's go to our exterior. We, did, we didn't finish these ones yet. So I'm actually going to select. Actually, we'll do this. Yeah, we'll, do, we'll just do the entire perimeter. And we'll type extrude. Uh, surface again. We want to change that direction though. Um, I'm just going to say all of my direction be this way, which again, that's not going to work. Let's go back. So let's do this one by one, just to have a little bit more control. So right now it's extruding both sides. I want to do no on both sides so I can choose which direction. Because right now, I just want this to extrude out an inch and a half. So we type an inch and a half and extrude it out away from our structure. That way it meets up with that edge. We can do that again with this one, an inch and a half. And if you guys ever want to repeat a command without having to type it in, you can just press your space bar. It remembers the last command that you've done. And we can just go through and extrude each one of these. So now we have something that we can kind of work with. Um, there's some issues right here. We can come through and extend those out to meet the edges if we really want to. Uh, I'm going to test a, a solid object tool. I'm going to turn my control points on. And I'm just going to basically move that point one and a half inches to the edge. 
this point 1.5 inches to the edge. Oops. If we want to select both of those points, we can move them simultaneously 1.5 inches to the edge. And if we do something like that, now we can actually um, have that meet up at the edge. If you don't want those control points to show up again, you can type in points off and it'll turn those control points off. But we're going to need to turn it on again just for this. So again, that's going to be turn on solid control points. So have your object selected that you want control points to be um, generated on. Open those up again. Instead of doing them one by one like I did earlier, I'm just going to click these nodes. I'm going to click my green arrow to move it in that direction, but now I need to go opposite of that. So I'm going to do negative 1.5 inches, and now it meets up to the edge over there. Uh, we can type points, oops, points off again. So those control points don't show up. And we can do the same procedure to this edge. So we'll have that. Click my control points on over here. Select each one of these points. Move in the negative 1.5 there. Come over here now. Select my points. Move it 1.5 inches. So now those edges look a little bit better. I'm going to turn my points off so they're not uh, visually there. And there we go. So that is looking fairly decent. I'm going to group these real quick so I have a little bit more control moving them. So just in the command line, type group. And now we can move these wherever we want. On top of this, we're going to need some sort of surface that uh, emulates plywood. So I'm going to take this surface over here. Just going to copy, paste it. Should be good to go. I'm going to move it a little bit more particularly by this point. Get it right on that corner. We have that intersection, and that should, in theory, line it up to where we need it. And now we're going to do another extrude surface command. So if we do extrude surface, we're going to go in the Z direction. Uh, typical plywood can range in a, a level of thicknesses. I'm going to do 3 quarter of an inch for some thick material. So I do 0.75 inch, and we got our plywood surface now. If we want to test to see how this thing is reading, I'm going to go through and hide this real quick. Maybe hide this surface for the time being. Um, let's see how this is looking real quick. I'm going to make 2D on this just to see if it's going to be uh, registering appropriately. Uh, we'll, right now, we'll just have it in the perspective view. Uh, maintain our source layers so um, it's grouped within our waffle structure layer. Uh, we can have a scene silhouette if we want to. Hidden line if we need it. I don't want any hidden line information. Uh, group our output. So let's make 2D and see how that looks. I'm going to go to our top view to look at our make 2D. And it seems like it's generating uh, a a nice level of information. The one thing that needs to show up that is not showing up is where these things intersect. Because technically, these are two surfaces that are just in space, um, technically intersecting, but they aren't showing those intersection lines. So I'm just going to Control Z, get that out of here. Um, and now, if we select our group that we had here, if we type in intersect, what that does is puts a curve onto each moment where it does intersect. So now there is a level of information inside that we can work with. Uh, I'm actually going to go back, select that, 
intersect again. And then while all of that information is still selected, I'm going to type group. So if I click on that contour, we have all of that information in one layer. Um, let's do a make 2D again and see what result we have now. Uh, all the information should be the same on our export options. Go back to the top view panel to look at it. And now that we have those intersections in, we have our lines that indicate where material is actually uh, intersecting, which is perfect. That's really going to make our drawing a little bit more detailed. Um, it's going to cut a little bit of that, that work out for us. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to control Z. Now that I know that the Make 2D will work on that, let's bring this back over to our um, starting point and work from it there. So I'm going to type in the move command. Let's say I'm going to just select this object or this point right here, bring it over to this point. And that should be lined up fairly decent. Um, I'm having issues with my zooming, so I'm going to go to my standard plane right here. This zoom window, if you zoom window around your object, it'll make navigation quite easy. And just from initial inspection, it looks like we're lined up pretty decent. Looks like we're off by an inch and a half here. Off an inch and a half here, off by an inch and a half here, off by an inch and a half here. So I'm going to say that's lined up relatively well. Um, if we go back to our reference image, we can see that these types of buildings have more of a modern or contemporary clean edge. Uh, I want a little bit of overhang in my design. Um, if you do want uh, this to be more of a clean straight edge from roof to wall. That's an option that you can explore. I'm going to go with an overhang. So knowing that this is on a two foot by two foot grid, I'm going to move my planes in by two feet, so negative two feet. I'm going to move this one in again by negative two feet. I'm going to move this one in just two feet since it's going in that positive direction, and this one in by two feet. So in theory, if I hide my plywood, this should be directly beneath our grid, in a sense. Which is looking pretty decent. All right, I'm going to extrude these up just a bit because I want to cut them at a specific level. So if we just hold this blue right here around all of these, we just want them to be able to get high enough for our member right here to do the cutting. So I'm extruding these up. So now that we have all those extruded up past where we need them, I'm going to split. I'm going to select objects to split. So that'll be these four planes that we have extruded or stretched upwards. And I'm going to use this surface as our splitting tool. What that is going to do is we can see now it's trimmed some of these uh, exterior parts off. Uh, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide this group and this group for the time being because there's also some information here that is going to need to be deleted away. So I'm going to select all of these and hide them too so that I can just come in here, select all of that information that I don't need anymore and delete that out. 
Now we can type in the option show and it will show all of our hidden objects, even the ones that we hid in the, in the beginning. Now what I'm going to do is I want these to be a little thicker to register as um, wall planes. So right now I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to type this one walls. I'm going to make sure I'm working in that layer. I'm going to select all of my walls, go over to my properties tab here, and just move that to the wall layer. I want them to be a different color than my surface. So I'm just going to come into this color box and select a color that I, I want to be working with. So we have some purple walls for right now. Let's give these walls some thickness. Let's do our extrude surface command. And this is on center to our grid. So I want to make sure that my both sides is turned on. And so we're extruding from both sides. I want this to have an overall wall thickness of, let's say, standard six inches. So instead of typing six, we'll do three inches because it, it, it will extrude from both directions. Uh, there we go. We got a six inch wall. We'll do that again for this one so we can space bar our previous command three inches. Good to go. Another one three inches, another one, three inches. So now we have our overall wall thickness that we want. And now I want to probably trim these up a little bit so they are not uh, overlapping. So there's a couple methods that you can do that. Uh, one method that's pretty easy is we can make our own cutting tool. Um, an easy way is we can just have a surface generated. So I'm going to go to our surface tool. I'm going to create a cutting tool, however long I deem necessary. And with our Boolean or our gumball tool, we can actually move this relatively quick. I'm going to move more specifically with my move command so I can toggle a point. I'm going to get it right on the edge there and make sure that it extends past a certain direction. We can use that to trim that corner. And I'm going to copy this cutting tool again. I'm going to bring it over to this edge where it intersects. Just say right there. I'm going to do it to this edge too, where it's intersection right there. And another one right there. Then we can use our gumball tool. As long as we're moving it in this plane, we can trim those up from there. Once we get them in position, we can do a, a trim command. So now I want to split these objects again. It'll be this wall and this wall that are getting split currently. I'm going to select the cutting objects, which are these cutting planes that I developed. There's multiple ways that you can make something in Rhino. This is just how I like to do it. This is how my mind thinks. Started from a solid and slowly subtracting it away. And when we press Enter, now we have these trimmed edges that we can delete out. We don't need them anymore. I'm going to rotate these by 90 so we can do our second trim off of the other walls that we have. And if you're holding your gumball, you can click this blue arc. And if you hold shift, it'll do by 90 degrees. And then again, I'm going to type in my move command, select a point on this plane that I want to reference. And then we can go up to a point 
that we know exists. I'm going to move this one into place as well. Move this one into place. So right now I'm having some viewing options. I'm going to turn my waffle structure off so I can actually see what I'm doing here. Looks like that one didn't move where I wanted it to, so I'm going to just click it again. Now again, we're going to use our gumball tool to position this so that the plane is where we want to be cutting. Once we get all these in position, we'll be in a good position. All right, again, we're going to use our split command. The objects that we want to split are the remaining two walls. Press Enter. Select our cutting objects, these planes right here, and press enter. Now I'm going to delete our cutting planes and then delete that information right there. So for the most part, that's working. What we can see is that split also left these um, open ends on either side. I'm going to select every one of those and We'll just zoom in on this so we can see what happens. If we type in the command cap, it'll close off all the sides that have been opened, which is what we want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these because I want them to be trimmed all at the same uh, height at the base. So I'm going to do the split command once more. I'm going to use this as our cutting object and press enter. And now we can see that that trimmed our base flush. Again, there's going to be an open base to this. We can type cap in our command line. It'll put a base on each one of those. So now we have our four walls. We turn our roof structure on. We're starting to get somewhere. This looks kind of funky. I'm not sure I would ever really design something like this, but for the sake of this video, this is where we are at. So that that's a good point to be at. Uh, we have our roof structure. Um, I'm not going to develop uh, shingles or any type of roof covering besides this plywood because most likely we're going to be looking at it to where we can't even see that information. So if we want to not generate some information that's not being seen, let's do that. Save us some time. So now we have this to work with. We have walls and we have roof. Now let's move onto uh, maybe some window openings and door openings. All right, so I think our next step <clears throat> will be kind of figuring out what we want for windows and doors. I'm thinking that this is going to be like a, a coffee shop or a cafe or something to that nature. So I might need a little bit more um, light coming in, a little bit of glazing. Uh, to help me help or to help me understand the actual size and feel of this, I'm actually going to import a scale figure or a person. Um, if you guys want, uh, this one's called PimpMyDrawing.com, and there's some free um, AI or DWG files that you can download. Um, these are similar to the Atelier Bow Wow style that they have so you can get a whole slew of them for free there's some that you have to buy but a lot of these you can just download and save um, for your own asset library uh, an asset library is going to be scale figures of humans trees cars anything of that nature we can see that if we click the trees there's some free trees that we can download and if we need some cars to fill a scene there's some free ones that we can download so uh, pimpmydrawing.com you can download them in either an Illustrator file or a DWG file, um, which is fantastic. So I've already downloaded a couple of them. I'm going to go to uh, Import, 
and I'm just going to select this man walking that I found. Uh, it'll ask you a, a couple things. Um, we're just going to import it in and scale them to the right size. So right away we can see, hey, that actually came in looking pretty decent, not bad. I'm going to take layer three here, rename it scale figure so I know where my scale figures will be. And then I'm going to group this entire thing that came in because it's all uh, sections. I'm going to go into my properties and put that in the scale figure uh, layer. I'm also going to scale this in all directions. So if I type in my scale, I select the object to scale. I'm going to go to his feet. I'm going to hold shift and go all the way to the top of his head. And let's just say he's kind of average height. We'll do 5 foot 11 inches. Once we get him to the 5 foot 11 inches, we can use our gumball tool to get him standing up. And then I'm just going to move him close to my building so I get a sense of scale. Because right now it's been scaleless. If we get our person over here, now we can kind of see how big this building is. So I think it's a decent size for a cafe, and if not, whatever, it's a fictitious building for a drawing. We will deal with it. So now we need to make some doors. We can go online, we can find uh, all the scales that we want for doors and windows and all that. Um, I'm actually going to, let's say, take a chunk of this out and create some storefront. So I'm going to utilize um, my curve or my, my line tool right here. I'm going to Let's just say, I don't know, I want it maybe 10 feet high. And if we want to have this go straight up, we can control click our starting point. So it goes all the way up there. It looks like maybe 10 feet is a little too high because it's going past our point up there. So I'm going to do that again. Like I said before, if you control click, so hold control and click that point, you'll be able to go in the vertical direction. Um, a lot of people don't really know that. It's a helpful tool. Uh, so instead of 10 feet, let's just say eight foot high is where I'm gonna have my line start. Go back to the line tool. And now I'm just going to give myself some boundaries to follow. So that's where I want my my uh, storefront or glazing. And by storefront, um, it's just going to be mullions and glass, which we'll get to. Um, I'm going to have, let's just say, I want one to one mullion to be in the middle on either side. I'm going to go to the midpoint. I'm actually going to delete this out. I know my height is set. I want this to go all the way to the edge. And I want a midpoint to midpoint connection right there. So that's going to be kind of the middle span right there. And let me just see what. So if we type in DIM, that is a dimension tool. From the interior of this wall to the midpoint, I want to see what we're working with. So it looks like a nine and three quarter foot span, which is completely fine. I'm just going to say that they're really nice structural pieces of glass. So I'm going to have a corner column here come down, a column come down here from this. Actually, these are going to be kind of opaque walls. I don't really want them to be transparent, but I want a lot of my transparency to come from these. So from here, you can type an offset. And our offset will be 
say I want my mullion to be about, let's say, two inches. That didn't really work. All right, instead of building this off of curves, I'm just going to create my polyline on the ground right here. So we know we have a max height of eight. I'm gonna do eight foot. I want a width of, let's say, two inches. Maybe that's how big our mullion is gonna be. I'm gonna come back, do eight foot again and then complete our curve that way. Now I can extrude a curve with our extrude curve command. Let's just give it a depth of four inches. So I have something to work with there right now. I don't really want to keep that one because I can copy and paste this object now. Uh, I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to name this Oh, still in my command line up here. I'm going to name this storefront. And then I'm going to take this object, go to my properties, and put it in the storefront layer. I'm going to rotate this up, and I will rotate this 90 degrees this way. That way, when I type in my move command, I can kind of approximate where I want this. So on midpoint, that's where my first mullion will be. As you can see, it's an open face. We can go back in here, type in our command tool to complete that object. It's wonderful. I'm going to copy. Let's just say I want to paste it right there. We'll have a corner column over here that we can deal with later. Might be cool to have a little bit more verticality going in here. Uh, I'm just going to say it's some really expensive nine foot glass spanning, although having more information might be a little bit better. I'm going to divide this real quick, divide command. I want there to be two segments. So now we can see that this line, oops, it just has points on there. So I'm going to go back, do my divide command, see what's toggled on here. So right now we can choose to split it or not. I'm going to split it. And press enter. Now we have two different lines split in two pieces. I'm going to copy this mullion that I was dealing with earlier. And if I have my midpoint control selected down here, I can go to the midpoint of that new line and put it right on there. And go back to the midpoint of this line, put it right on there. So now we can see there's divisions. Now this seems like a more realistic scale for how our um, glazing is going to be. Uh, I'm gonna go through and finish this up a little bit. It's gonna be the same procedure, so it's gonna be uh, slightly fast forwarded until I get what I, I want. All right, I'm going to extrude a curve here and just kind of trim this stuff away right now. Uh, I want this whole edge to be glass, so I'm just gonna chop a section of this right now. It's only extruding in the Z direction, so I'm gonna change my direction. Have it be coming out this way, and that's just by clicking direction up here and stipulating that. 
just extrude it out a little bit. I'm gonna move these in and I want to split this uh, wall right here. So we're gonna type in split. These are cutting objects and we can delete those out. And I can delete my cutting objects if I don't wanna use those anymore. So now we can kind of see this starting to develop. Uh, it looks pretty decent so far. I think that's looking all right. I'm going to do the same thing over here real quick. All right, <clears throat> so now that we have these sections kind of chopped out, uh, we can go through and try to create a border out of these mullions. So I'm going to take one of these, I'm going to control V it or copy paste. I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to move this. Kind of where we want it there. I'm going to just kind of stretch it out so it kind of goes the whole direction. Control V again, copy paste. Oops. Rotate it 90 degrees. And I will move this point to be in line with our other mullions. And right now they're not underneath the wall where I want them to be, so we can move those in a second. I'm going to want to move this in line. So if we want to lock this in one direction, while we hold shift, and click tab once we let go it'll lock it in place that way we can kind of click an endpoint to where we want to match that distance and then i'm just going to move this so it has some overlap all right i want this to be uh, on center of our wall thickness down here so i'm going to have all of those i'm going to move them i'm going to get to the midpoint of this and again I'm gonna do that same thing I'm gonna have it going in this one direction and I'm gonna hold tab so I can lock it and I'm gonna to go to the midpoint of this wall so now our storefront should be in the midpoint of that wall uh, it looks like right now we have the mullion is actually in the wall we can uh, trim that out a little bit later when you do the same thing to this side All right, I'm also going to copy these real quick, control V. I'm going to move them down to the base here. And I want them to actually meet up on the bottom of here. So I can actually type in move like I've been doing. I'm going to hit this point. And if I control click on that point that I started from, we can move in the Z direction. And I'm going to click the end of that, so it should be lined up perfectly with that base, which is what we uh, what we want. That looks like some good storefront be developed. I think it might be. Um, I don't know. It's something that I probably wouldn't design, but for this, we're just going to try to make something quick. I'm going to delete this curve out of here. It's going to control V this. I'm going to move it up a little bit. Control to click your point so you can move it just straight up and down. Actually, a more simple solution is just always to use the line tool. 
I'm going to select my line right here. Just drag it all the way out. I'm going to extrude curve. And I'm going to change my direction because it's going in the vertical. I want it to go this direction. It's going to make it large enough to cut those um, walls that we had earlier. I'm going to bring this out. Type the split command. I want to trim these walls real quick with this. Delete that away. Now we have these edges that we can kind of trim away. Now it's looking a little bit more detailed. So it's a typical six inch wall over here, four inch mullion. Um, I don't think we're going to be putting any window panes within this because we can develop our transparencies in Illustrator fairly well. So we'll kind of just assume that there's glass in between here. Um, we'll develop a door situation here in a second, but for right now, I think that's working pretty, pretty well. Split command again. That's my object I want to cut. I'm going to use this as my cutting object. Click enter. Now we can delete out that information that we don't need. Do split again. It's like objects to split. I want this one to be split. This will be my object that does it. Actually, we don't really need to do that. What we can do, though, is scale 1D. So scale 1D is a pretty awesome uh, tool. I want this to be my endpoint right now. I'm going to go over here. And as you can see, it'll scale in one direction. There's a scale in two direction. I want to scale in one direction and meet up against this wall right now. So that's looking nice. We're going to do that command again. I'm going to scale this object from the other side now. This is my starting point. This will be my end point. And then I can end it right there where I want it. It looks like there's maybe yeah, surface generated right there. I'm going to do a little bit more of my zoom control so we can see that's going on. It looks pretty decent. I'm going to go ahead and with those commands that we've been using, finish this storefront, um, clean it up, and we'll be back to it. All right, now I'm going to develop a door for uh, a portion of this. I'm just going to say I want a door to be right here. So I'm just going to go through. I'm going to use my polyline tool. I'm going to just create a plane real quick. It looks like we might still be in walls. I'm going to go to my layer right here. I'm going to call it door. That's what I'm going to be working with right now. I'm going to make sure that this is also in the door where I'm generating my stuff. Uh, so now that we have, I did a polyline right here to create a curve. 
I can go over to my surface area right here, the surface button, and there's something called surface from planar curves. Boom, we can generate a surface from those. <clears throat> Just going to delete that out. So I want this door to be So the door needs a type of frame around it. I'm going to actually go back, have my curve selected. When I select that curve, do offset, curve on surface, select base surface. So I want it to go inwards. I'm going to offset it. Let's just say I want the door thickness to be uh, three inches. There we go. So now we can see we have one curve and another curve that uh, is joined right there. I'm going to create another line. And since we have a midpoint right here, I'm going to divide the door in two. I'm going to offset curve on surface again. On this surface, and it'll be another three inches that direction. And we'll do that same thing. I'm going to Oops. Do another offset curve in the other direction. So offset, curve on surface, select this surface. I'm going to flip the direction. It will be three inches again. Boom. I'm kind of sketching out a door. I also want on this midpoint a kind of a push bar location. So I'm going to do a line right here. Actually, no, we want it to be a little bit more clean. So this is going to be an entire glass plane. I'm going to put railings uh, on both sides of these. So that's what we're going to do for that. Um, I'm going to utilize this curve as a splitting tool. So I'm going to split. Select object to split. I want this plane to be split. And I'm going to utilize this this and this to split our surface. So I can delete out these portions that are going to be um, not necessary. And then I'm gonna not move that curve anymore. I'm gonna go through here, select all of these surfaces that I just generated. Just going to move those out here to help them and make it easier. Maybe I'll go through and delete these curves that I don't really need anymore that I used to make this door frame. And then I want to kind of join all of them together real quick. And then I'm going to merge all faces. That way we have a more clean uh, result. Let's say I want this door frame extruded out, so we're going to extrude surface. Uh, I don't need it on both directions. Let's just say uh, 1.5 inches out for the frame. There we go. We got a pretty decent looking frame starter for our door. We can move that into position where we developed it for. Move this object. I'm going to go in at the midpoint, right there, and inset it. So I think that's a pretty decent location for my door. That way there can be seating all along this edge right here and seating along this edge. And in the back, maybe we can have a countertop for our barista or whoever it might be. But for right now, I think that's pretty decent for our door entry. If we want to be legal about it, we might need another door for exit. But for this project, uh, we have our storefront started right there, our door right here, and I think that's good for some windows and doors to begin with. Now let's start to develop the interior. All right, now that we have kind of our walls, our roof, our storefront, our um, doors kind of figured out, and remember, you can do whatever you really want. I wanted to do a storefront so I have a little bit more uh, visual into the building. Um, you could do closed walls, whatever you want. 
just kind of mess around with it, create something interesting. Now we have to start to develop a little bit of the interior. Uh, so I'm going to create some tables and chairs that I want to uh, have in my space. You don't really need to create chairs or tables. You can go online and find some um, models if you just want to use those as quick placements. I'm going to make some real quick uh, through the same methods of how I sculpted all this. I'm going to base my measurements though off of some uh, measurements online. So if you want to figure out table and chair heights, um, plenty of resources online so they give you all the heights, average heights and ranges. Um, so there's the chair heights, there's the table heights. I'm just going to go through and make some arbitrary tables and chairs. Go through, have some fun. This is going to take a lot of time, so I'm going to fast forward through a ton of this. But it's the same methods. We're going to use our line tool to create shapes. We're going to extrude those shapes. We're going to join those shapes together. And we're going to make some assets to fill this space. So I'm going to go through and start to model some of that, that stuff. I'm also going to show you guys a little tip if you want to make some uh, tubular things quick. So right now I have my line work right here, the distances that I want. If we type in pipe, P-I-P-E, the pipe command, um, it'll ask us what, I, what we want our diameter to be. I'm going to say, let's do 2 inch. And there we go. That might That looks kind of a little chunky. I'm going to do that same process again, but you guys get what it's doing. So... We'll type in P-I-P-E, enter. Maybe I want a one-inch diameter. Boom. I kind of like how that's looking. And I use that pipe command. So over here, you can see that I've developed uh, some railing or some door handles on the outside for pulling and then some push bars on the inside for pushing. So if you guys want to utilize that pipe command to make stuff like this, um, it works fairly well. You just add a level of detail into our drawing. All right, so for the most part, this is starting to look pretty decent with some furniture. Um, the proportions are terrible. Um, like being a barista or somebody in the service industry to have this kind of a space back there is like would be freaking terrible. But for the purposes of this uh, tutorial, I think this is working pretty well. Now I'm just going to go in and kind of make it look like there's some stuff in the scene. Uh, as well as um, trimming up some of this stuff, uh, maybe making some lights out of some cylinders. So I'll just create a circle, extrude that up, make a cylinder, and have a curve, that a line that's coming down from it and dangling it from the ceiling. Um, I'll just continue to develop this a little bit by building up some stuff to make it look more realistic. Uh, maybe pop in a window or something, but I think for the most part it's doing all right. Um, like I said, I personally think it looks terrible. After I get some more of this further done, I'm gonna come in with some lines to add some texture 
but until then, I'm just going to fast forward and generate just a bit more. All right, so I think that's looking fairly decent for some objects to populate the space. Got some benches, some tables, uh, cups, uh, light pendants, some stuff over here that makes it look like there's um, stock of stuff. Uh, like I said before, this is something that probably will not look super great. But now we're going to go and we're going to add some texture to these walls. I'm going to kind of hide the storefront, scale figure, the roof structure, maybe the surface on the ground, and the furniture. Oops. I'm going to go to our... I'm going to make a new layer. <clears throat> I'm going to call this interior texture lines. So I'm going to kind of reference this image over here that we were looking for earlier. I'm going to do a lot of vertical lines and horizontal lines and just kind of call it good there. So we'll start with that. My line tool out. I'm just going to control click this so it goes up and I'm going to start doing some texture lines. If I get this in the right layer. All right. So this is called the array command. Um, what's beneficial about it is we can do a ton of lines repeated pretty quick. I'm going to show you how we do that again. So if we type in array, number in x direction, so how many we want in the, let's see. So this is our y right here. We don't want any in the uh, x direction number in the y direction I want to do uh, let's just let's just see what 30 first spacing reference from here all right and I'm not really certain how I want this to the spacing to look like. I'm just going to generate some quick lines. As fast as we can. All right, maybe that's a good level of spacing right there. So there's some quick lines that we generated there. I'm going to go through 
actually, let's say I want double the amount there. The trick that I like to do is I put a little line right here. I select all those lines. I'm going to deselect this line. I'm going to copy paste. And I'm going to move these out a little bit. I'm going to move this line to that line that I generated there right in the midpoint. And I can exit that. So it looks like it's a good number of vertical lines for us to work with. I'm going to copy and paste those real quick. I'm going to move them out. And I'm going to rotate them 90 degrees. And then I'm going to take our one starting line and I'll put it at the edge over here. And that generates some quick lines for us. I'm going to copy paste those again. I'm going to move them over here on this wall. And then since I'm not going to be really seeing this information because I'm going to be looking at it from this way, I'm not going to mess with that. But we could, I suppose, let's do a copy and paste again. I don't really know if this is going to look interesting or just weird, but I'm going to move these lines to the exterior over here. So we have some exterior uh, line texture. Maybe I'll bring this line down a little bit. All right, so that's some quick quick line rendering right there. Uh, I think it'll work just fine. But now we need to trim all these lines. We don't have these uh, different heights all over the place. So what I'm going to do is use the split command again. You can do trim command. Uh, it works fairly well. I just like to do split. So we're going to select objects to split. That'll be basically all of these uh, lines. So I'm going to hide our wall, I'm going to hide our door, I'm going to select all of those objects and select the cutting objects. I'm going to turn our wall all again, walls on again. Those are going to be our cutting object. I'm going to press enter. Now what that has done for us is we can select the top row or the, the top edges of all this and delete them out. And what will be left is the bottom half, which is what we want to keep as the texture on the inside. So I think that's working pretty well. Now for the, um, the ground, we can do the same kind of texture if we say, hey, I want to have some wood slats as the texture for the ground. I'm not really going to do that. I'm going to probably do something more like tile. So I'm just going to start with a one foot by one foot uh, tile. I copy paste that real quick. Let's see. All right. Actually, just for the sake of expediency, I am going to go to my walls, turn those off. I'm going to select some of these lines. I'm going to deselect the ones going in this direction. I just want to use all those lines. I'm going to copy and paste those. I'm going to move it out. Rotate down. And then I'm going to. Whoa. And then I'm going to 
stretch these lines. It's using our scale 1D. So if I do scale 1D, I'm gonna start here, end here, just really stretch those out so they cover my whole floor. If you rotate that 90, I'm gonna move this point over to the edge, line those up. Actually, I'm going to move them over one more because it looks like it's off by a bit. And I think that'll, that'll do quite nicely. Just going to see how all of this is working together right now. So I think that's probably going to be enough texture for us to work with inside of Illustrator. Um, you can spend a ton of time doing this. Um, I'm going to probably clean this up a little bit. But for us to kind of figure out how we're going to do the rest of this, let me fast forward a little bit. I'm going to go through and trim these lines. Uh, one thing that I realize I need to do is my surface down here, I'm going to extrude it vertically to um, make it a little bit thicker. So when we actually do our section drawing in a second, we can see that there is a concrete slab underneath there. So I'm going to fast forward just a bit, get this stuff trimmed out, and we should be good to go. All right, for the most part, that's looking awesome. Well, as awesome as it can be. What I'm going to do right now is kind of put a boxed volume to the one side. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna develop our section cut. So let's start by doing that. So just to give it some context on the side, I'm gonna have a volume that's just gonna be I don't know, next door, just develop some context. Maybe there's a small little alley running next to it. That's gonna be our context for that. Maybe there's a street over here. Um, we can do a lot of stuff to develop this before we export it, which makes our life quite a bit easier. Just gonna hide these real quick. But it's going to be more of an interior scene, so we'll be looking at it like this. Now we can add in some scale figures if we really want to. Let's, I'll show you how to do a section cut real quick. So if we go in to Rhino and type in section, what this is going to do is select objects for section. I want basically everything that we've developed to be a section cut, except maybe, oops, except maybe our lamp right here. And maybe our, no, that should be good. So we're gonna type section, and press enter. Our start of section, I'm going to put it basically right here before our door in that direction. Now, let me press enter. We should have generated a section. So we can see there's a small, thin profile through here. I might want to go in and actually put another plane that's thicker up there to show um, insulation or whatnot, but that's essentially how we do our section, and that's going to be correlating to our 
image that we're looking at. So that section I generated is this black line that's showing us what we're cutting through. So that is the section. Uh, now I'm going to quick go in and add some scale figures to kind of populate the scene. Uh, I might sit here. Let's see. I rotate this door a little bit so we can get um, a person to look like they're opening it. So I'm going to take it from this point to this point and maybe do a small open like that to make the scene a little bit more realistic. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and add some of these guys in. Maybe this guy is going to be outside for now. And remember, we can do a ton of stuff to add into this scene. Uh, I'm going to pause the video right now. I'm going to develop the scale figures, and we can go from there. All right, so now let's finish up some of these uh, moves that we need to do. So I kind of cleaned everything up, made it look fairly decent. I have some scale figures in here to populate um, what's going on. Some of them are kind of weird sizes, but I'm going to deal with it right now. What we're going to do now is uh, basically split our building all the way down in one line because that's going to be our section cut. Uh, so what I'm going to make sure I do is that none of these are groups. And I know that I had this uh, surface up here, or at least our waffle structure group. So I'm going to ungroup that. Just so um, when we split, it'll actually split. It doesn't split groups. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and unhide. Oops. Actually, it's show. I have some stuff that's hidden. So I have this cutting plane that I made. Um, and I put it just before uh, all of my scale figures. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide those scale figures right now. Everything else, though, I want to split. So what I'm going to do is select everything and then control click my plane to make sure that that's not getting cut. Actually, I don't really want to cut this one either, this box right here. So everything there is what I'm going to split. So I'm going to type in split and ask for my cutting object again. I'm going to use that plane as my cutting object. I'm going to press enter. This is going to take a little bit of time to um, split, but once it is done, it'll effectively split one half of the building and the front half we can kind of um, delete away. All right, so let's see how well that split. I'm just going to hide this cutting object again. I'm going to go from my top view. It's a lot easier to do um, some selects from that. So we can see right here is where we have that split. I'm just going to drag from this corner over. Looks like we might have selected something else in there. see for some reason these are probably grouped I'm going to go back in I'm going to deselect everything real quick this might be a group and this might be a group I'm going to ungroup yep those were grouped. So that's what happens when you group something. It will split it, but it'll continue to be in a group. Uh, I'm just going to go through here and make sure everything is ungrouped. Now I'm going to go from the top again, like we were doing earlier. I'm going to select all the way up to that line. I'm going to control click that, control click this. Go to our perspective, 
And then I'm just going to move this out of the way to kind of see what we're dealing with. So it looks like the front wall did not get taken away. So I know exactly why that is. This is still a group. I'm going to go in and do show again for my cutting plane. I'm going to take this and try to split my wall. I'm going to select my wall. Select objects to split. There we go. And select my cutting plane. And for some reason, it's still not cutting this out. All right, so now looking at that, that's looking pretty decent. Everything is split to where it needs to be split. Uh, the next thing we need to do is generate that um, section line. We're going to generate that section line from a set view as well. We don't want to generate a section line when we're not uh, in our perspective. So. Let's go to section real quick. Selects objects for section. It will basically be everything in here. Uh, start of section will be from here. End of section will be right here. And we can already see it kind of highlighting some of that stuff. If we press enter, our section will have been generated. And that's kind of what we have to work with right now. I'm going to do points off because I don't want those points inside. Let's see. Select, select point, delete those out. What I'm going to do with this right now is I'm just going to rotate it so it's flat. I can work with it easier from the top down. For the time being, I'm just going to rotate it. Now, while, we're in, while we are in Rhino, we can put in the, uh, the appropriate materiality that we need to through hatches. So if we go through and do hatch, select curves, press enter, and it'll do a fill. We can do a solid fill. We can do all these different types of lines, grids. Um, we can generate our own patterns. But for right now, I am just going to oops. I'm going to generate a hatch on here and just make it look like insulation. Say we're going to do some rigid insulation, so we'll do something there. For these uh, lines right here, since they are uh, pieces of wood being cut through, we're going to use our line to fill in this wood. So that's indicating that it is a piece of wood being cut through right there. Just go through and populate this section right here. And I know right now, Many of you don't really have an idea of what kind of section information you have to generate. I would just say take a stab at it. Look at some uh, section drawings. Uh, 
as a precedent to see what kind of information they're putting in on the section. Uh, for right now, you can just do what you feel like would be appropriate information. All of this is going to be the darker line in our drawing. So let's just go through. I'm going to populate this with some texture real quick. I'll fast forward and then once I get done, I'll kind of describe what information that I put within this. All right, so now that I've kind of developed our section a little bit, I don't have the right fills set. Uh, you can develop your own fills in the future, but I just use some of these hatches to kind of indicate a materiality. So we got some concrete being cut through, um, some rigid insulation. I did these lines on either side to indicate that there's some sort of uh, plywood or uh, gypsum board. Again, I put these X's through my wood to show that they are two by fours. Um, some more insulation up here. Uh, I put this line right here to indicate a piece of glass being cut through. Uh, it's not as accurate as it should be. It's not precise, but it'll get the job done for right now. But I, I grouped it right now, and I put it on its own layer called section. And now what I'm going to do is go back into our perspective. I'm going to... Rotate this, get it back to where it should be. I'm going to move it back into position. About right there. So we have that information when we make our 2D. Uh, and that comes in. So now that we have that information, I think that we can kind of manipulate the camera a bit to get that perspectival section cut like we see in our reference image over here. Um, they're doing it as the main room right here is going to be our focal point. So ours is going to be the focal point right here. Uh, we're not going to have a lot of this exterior information to work from, but that will be totally fine. So while we're in perspective mode, we can kind of mess with the camera a bit. If we go to Dolly Zoom, we can click and drag some of this and kind of affect the camera uh, any way that we see fit. I don't know why this is not hidden anymore. Hide that. Just going to go through and hide this information too. Now, before we export to Illustrator, I want to just get my view kind of set to where I want it. All right, I think that's. I think that's what I want to do. So I'm going to now kind of drag this, select everything that I want to see in my Make 2D. Looks like our scale figures are locked. We want to make sure they're not locked. We want all this to be made 2D right now. Now, this might take quite a bit of time to generate. Just be patient. I'm going to Make 2D right now. Before I do that, I'm going to save. Uh, you never know when this thing's going to crash. So I'll save that information right now. Let's make 2D and see what happens. Remember, everything that we have over here is in its own layer, and we need it in its own layer. So when we go into Illustrator, it's very easy to manipulate. So let's make 2D real quick. Uh, I want a group output. We don't want any hidden lines. Uh, maintain our source layers. 
So this looks all fairly decent. Let's go to Make 2D and see what happens. Now again, depending on the computing power that you have in your, at your disposal, it could take a minute or it could take several minutes. I'm going to go through right now and go to our top view. Move this scene out of the way. Looks like some of our hatches didn't really come through. Which is fine. I think for the most part, since those lines cut through there, um, I think we got enough information to work with. I'm going to delete this line right here. I don't like how that one's looking. I'm going to go back real quick for some reason and make 2D didn't include the hatches on our characters. All right, so what I found out is these hatches uh, weren't going to populate inside of my um, Make 2D. So what I had to do is select all of this uh, section information, and then I had to explode. So I use the explode command, and then what that does is just actually turns those all into uh, small curves. So now with all of those where they need to be, I'm going to regroup those. I'm going to move this back into position and do another make 2D to see if my results are a little bit better. We also might need to do that to our scale figures. I'm going to lock everything except our scale figures and select all of our scale figures. Oh, it looks like our wall information is still there. I'm going to double click my scale figures. Make sure that every layer is locked except our scale figures. I'm going to explode them, ungroup them, so it looks like we have our surface and we have our line work. Now just for the sake of having them all in the same group, I'm going to group them. And now we should be able to do everything we need. I'm going to make sure my ground plane, I want to try to make it parallel with my bottom plane right there. All right, now that this whole scene is kind of set up, I'm going to go through here. Oops. Make sure everything is unlocked before you do all of this. Now let's try to crash a computer. Make 2D. All right, so everything should be set up correctly. Let's let the computer work for a little bit. And once we get all of this information, we should be able to go to Illustrator. That actually looks fairly decent for a one-shot trick. I'm going to go into here and see what my section line looks like. So it looks like some of that information is coming through. All right, so I basically went back to this step. I selected all of these and put them on the section layer. So now all the information I need on my section layer is there. I can finally group them for the last time. Move it back into position. Just 
just going to go through here, type the cap command so that some of these faces that were open are now capped. And now we should be good. All right, now I'm going to go through one last time. Select it all. Make 2D. For the final time. Go to our top view, move that over, and let's just make sure everything is reading fairly accurate. We can go into Illustrator and cut some of those lines away if we need to. But I think for the most part that's working pretty well. I am going to now export this whole make 2d so we'll select that go to file export selected we'll go into our adobe illustrator file i'm going to name this wow line work and then save. We want it to be the snapshot of the current view. Let's preserve, or we don't need to preserve model scale. Uh, we don't really have any hatches anymore, so that's not really a thing that we need to worry about. So let's press OK. And now let's go to Illustrator. All right, now with opening Illustrator, uh, we can create a new file. Uh, I'm going to do a custom one over here. We can change our dimensions. I'm going to stay with inches. I don't think a square format would work very uh, well for this. So I'm going to do 18 by, let's say, 24. That should open up a new file. We're also going to open up our line work right away. So there's our line work. I'm going to open that. We can select all of this. I'm just going to quickly change our stroke color with this guy. Uh, 0, 0, 0 to make it all black so that all the information that we see turns in all black. Now we're going to take this and bring it into our artboard that's the right size. The one thing we need to have selected is over in our layers, we have this three line symbol over here. Go all the way down and make sure paste remembers layers is selected. So when we bring that into a new document, all of our layers come with it. So it's just a little, little tip to save some hassle. Now I'm just going to stretch this as far as I kind of want. I'm going to keep it uh, closer to the bottom so it's a little bit more bottom oriented. And now we have a scene to kind of work with. It's kind of looking pretty similar to what we were going for. Uh, let's go through, select all of this right now. In our stroke control, I'm just going to change all the way to 0.25 and see how that looks. So that might be a little too light. Let's get our reference Im image back up here just to kind of see what we're trying to compare it to. So the line weight actually isn't that far off. I still think it needs to be slightly heavier. So I'm going to go into here I'm going to select everything again, and let's do maybe like 0.4, see how that feels. Looks a little bit better. 
And then the one thing that I want to do is let's find our section cut. So I think this is our section cut. That's the one that needs to be uh, heavy. So I'm going to go over to this little circle next to our section cut layer. I'm going to select it so everything on that layer is selected. And now I'm going to increase our section cut line. Um, let's see what one point looks like. Looks fairly decent. I'm going to, uh, I guess, select all of that stuff again and see what a two point looks like. Ooh, that's a little heavy. I'm going to go back and be 1.2. Make sure you're only selecting your section layer. I think the 1.2 is working fairly decent for me. Uh, I'm going to come in to these square moments. While I'm on my section layer, And just kind of redraw some of these things that didn't show up from Rhino because these chairs are being cut through. Looks like I also might want to find this line right there and increase that thickness to 1.2 as well just so it also reads as a cut line you can just go through and really just tune in the drawing to your liking until it kind of reads what it needs to read the beauty about this drawing style is it's all line weight so once we get done kind of tracing what we need to trace adding what we need to add um, it's pretty much done looks like this line right there needs to be heavy as well So I'm going to go through, thicken all the lines that I need to thicken, and then we can, I'll show you how to finish up uh, a little bit more of this styling. All right, that's looking good. I'm going to go back to our reference image and just kind of see what we have going on. So the remainder of what we have that we can utilize to our benefit is we can put dimension lines in here to kind of give an overall feel of how big this thing is. Uh, we can do these call outs, which are going to describe the materiality uh, fairly well. So I'm just going to go through real quick and kind of populate that information. What I'm going to be doing is just basically using the line tool and text tool to kind of call out some of this information. All right, <clears throat> so for the most part, I'm fairly happy with how this turned out. I think, obviously, you can spend a lot of time to make this a little bit more believable. I would spend a little bit more time developing the exterior uh, behind this, but the main part that we tried to develop today was the style of our interior building, the section that we uh, developed, and also 
these leading edges that help describe the project. I didn't put any descripting text in there, I just used lorem ipsum, which is a filler text, but these leading edges would be describing the wall assembly, the roof assembly, maybe some flashing detail, uh, down here maybe a mullion detail, but that in a sense is the Adelaide Bow Wow tutorial. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, we learned a few new things. We generated this nice complex roof structure through contours in Rhino. Uh, as weird as the 3D model looked when I started generating some of these filler objects, it actually doesn't look terrible. But um, like I said, you can go back in, generate whatever you need to generate. You can put in plants, uh, trees, uh, to kind of help make the scene feel more complete so uh with that being said uh, have a good day